Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of this series. So in the last video, I talked a little bit how I'm bringing in the serverless framework, which is basically just an NPM package you can set up and install. And what this framework allows you to do is quickly create your Amazon resources and kind of connect them all together. So using that, what I'm going to do is basically create the first section of this minting system where basically a user can upload a zip and that zip file is going to trigger another Lambda to start unzipping it and do some more processing. Let's just go ahead and talk about kind of like what we're going to do. And then I'll show you some of the code that I've already implemented just to give you an update on this dev vlog. And just to show you this real quick, just to give you an update on stuff I've actually implemented. If the line is green, that means that I've implemented it in code. If it's red, that means I haven't even touched it yet, right? So there's still a lot I need to kind of add in. You see, notice all this stuff is red. But the thing that I'm showing you in this video series right now is this part of the, the higher level diagram, right? It's the ability to get a pre-signed key, a pre-signed post URL with a key and then uploading that to a zip and then having that trigger something. So I wanted to take a different approach for kind of explaining and drawing out the system using pen and paper over using the draw IO diagram I've been using. So let me know if this approach is a little bit better or easier to follow or if it's more um, entertaining. So the first thing that we need to do in this minting system is we have like a user here, right? And the user, sorry, this pin is gonna be pretty dull. The user needs to be able to go to a website and basically enter in a file. They should have like a form where they can enter in a file. So I'll just go ahead and draw like a little web page here. Maybe it has like an input box and a submit. And when the user actually submits the file, this needs to be put into an S3 bucket, right? But as I kind of explained in the last video, my S3 bucket is private. So in order to allow someone to upload to a private S3 bucket, you need to have them first hit something called like a pre-signed URL. So let's just go ahead and draw like a little circle over here. This could be like my back end. I only have red and blue markers right now, so hopefully that's fine. But first, the first step is you need to hit the back end and I will say pre-sign. If you can read that. And basically what needs to happen is step one, the user needs to basically hit this pre-sign URL, that's step one. And that is going to basically create some type of pre-signed URL. There's actually like an Amazon method called create pre-signed post. And that's gonna send over some data that has like a URL and some permissions that you can attach to the URL to allow users to upload directly to a bucket. So over here, let's just draw a bucket. And the idea is when they hit that submit button, we're going to first get that pre-signed URL. And then using Axios or Fetch, whatever your favorite client library is, we are going to make a request from the front end to that S3 bucket using a post request. And I do have a video on my channel that I'll pin um, at this point if you want to learn more about how to create an S3 bucket and you can do a pre-signed post to that bucket. And I really need new markers. These markers just suck. But at this point, this is kind of like what I want to build out first, just so the user can actually upload their zip file to S3. And then later on, there's going to be another Lambda over here. And then after they've successfully uploaded a file to that bucket, what's going to happen is that I'm going to create an S3 trigger to basically run another Lambda function, right? So this is going to be step three. There's going to be a trigger kind of made up. And this is kind of just built into Amazon. You just create like a trigger you point the Lambda to your S3 bucket, and then every time a file gets added or removed or deleted, you can kind of choose what happens. So we're gonna do that, and over here, I'm calling this a zipper. And what this zipper Lambda is gonna do is take the, the zip file that was uploaded, and it's going to unzip it and kind of put a bunch of data into Dynamo, right? But I'm not gonna go any further in this diagram. This is kind of all I wanted to kind of show you for step one of implementing the minting system. Let's go ahead and look at some of the code that we did to get this going. So I do want to demo what's going on first. So this is the UI I have. This is hosted using Next.js. I decided to use Next.js just because a lot of people use it as well. And I do think I might need to do some type of search engine optimization in the future. So I'm going to keep using Next.js for the, the UI. And what we have here is a simple input box where they can select the file and then click Submit. So when they do this, what that's going to do is first, let me show you. That is going to hit a pre-signed URL like we kind of talked about in that diagram, which returns back a bunch of data that we can use to basically upload directly to the S3 bucket. Now, there are some like criteria that are in this pre-signed post that require it to start with a certain key or be a certain key. 
so that users can't just upload whatever they want to the, the bucket. They have to upload to a specific key in the bucket. And you can also add like expiration times of like how long this URL can live and stuff. But that is what we uh, have set up, the pre-signed. And then we also do a post request to the back end. You can see here we did a post request and we got a 204 no content. That means everything worked fine. So let's go back and I want to show you if I go to my bucket now, after I've clicked that upload button, you'll see that there's a file here. This is a zip file that I just uploaded. And I also want to show you the trigger that I have set up. So if I go to this Lambda function called NFT Magic Dev Unzipper, you'll see that it's the function set up with an S3 trigger here. And the trigger is set to that bucket that we also created. So that's how the trigger is kind of set up. And you can see if I go to monitor and actually go to the metrics, we should see that it got invoked one time. Um, this might take a while to load. So let me just show you the logs. This is basically what the Lambda is doing. It doesn't do anything other than log out the event. So you see here, we get this object that says, hey, we got a created object in this bucket. And then you can dive into this S3 property to get more information about it. So that's basically the extent of what I've done in this part of the video. And what I do want to show also is some of the code in case you're interested in learning more about that. So again, in the serverless file, in order to set up an S3 bucket, this one took me a little bit of time to figure out because for some reason it's not really straightforward, but I had to go into the provider section and I needed to define an S3 bucket here called mint bucket. And then I gave it a custom name. And I also had to give it some course configuration to allow external users to hit the bucket, right? So this is an important setup that you need to do. But the reason I had to put it in providers instead of resources down at the bottom is that if you want to do this S3 event setup, which I do here, you have to have it in a provider for some reason. I don't really know. I'm kind of confused and I didn't really want to spend too much time looking into why that is. But basically what this is saying is create an, a function called unzipper and hook that up to the S3 bucket um, called min bucket. This is like a, I think they call it like a logical ID. This is like a, I don't know if it's like a, the cloud formation ID or the serverless framework ID, but this is how it refers back to that provider mint bucket, right? You notice the names kind of match here. So that's how that's getting set up. And then also you can specify a filter to say, I only want an event when a new file is posted to the bucket. So that's how we set it up in serverless. And when I do a serverless deploy, it basically creates the bucket, it creates the Lambda, and it also connects those two together. So Go back to the diagram where I had that line going from the bucket to a Lambda. All this is super easy to do with serverless. It's all set up. And let me show you some of the code. So in the unzipper, all this is doing, actually right now it's not doing anything. I think I got rid of the console log, but this used to console log the event and that's it. But I also added in a bunch of comments that kind of in my head map out the next steps, right? So I like to do a higher level diagram and then dive into smaller diagrams and then dive into the code and leave comments to kind of lay out what the code needs to do. And that's how I help visualize like the steps that are needed to implement a part of a system. So that's the zipper. Now let me show you the UI. So the UI I brought in Next.js. I think Next.js is a, it's a good framework to use, to be honest with you. So if you're interested in doing some type of React application where search engine optimization is kind of important, just use Next.js. It can kind of compile your code into pre-built static files if you want to host it on a CDN, which is kind of what I plan on doing. But the gist of this, if I go to my index file, let me show you the, uh, the main code that's kind of getting this file uploaded. All right, so in the actual JavaScript, or in the actual React component, we have a form here, and that form has an input box and a button, right? So if I go back here, this is the input box and the button. And whenever someone uploads or changes the file, we are just setting that file onto the state of this React component, right? So we have a state use state hook here that gives us access to a set upload file function. And we're basically keeping track of the file that they're changing to. And when they submit the form, we are basically making a request to that API gateway URL. The first get a pre-signed URL, and then we are basically using that URL in the fields to generate some form data, right? So this is kind of some hacky workaround you have to do. We have to create a form data object and append stuff to it. But as long as you have the bucket in the file and the metadata that comes back from the fields in your pre-signed post, everything should be able to be uploaded to the bucket successfully. So once you've done that, I can just do a fetch request and that'll send the file over to the bucket and that should get written like we saw on Amazon.
And that's really all I have in regards to the UI and the backend and you know the serverless setup. But one thing that I want to mention, just in case anyone's trying to learn for themselves, if you wanted to do the create pre-signed post, actually, I guess I could show that. I didn't really show that, did I? Let me go to the mentor. There should be an index file. And inside this mentor, we have like the pre-signed URL endpoint. In order to use this function, the create pre-signed post function, your Lambda function has to have permissions to write to the bucket, right? I kind of stumbled upon that issue with permissions where you're basically saying, give someone permission on behalf of this Lambda role to write to the bucket. So with that being said, you need to make sure that your permissions, which I also have defined in the serverless, have put object permissions on that bucket. So I had to go back and I made sure that I added this statement to the roles of the Lambda that's kind of creating this pre-signed post. Um, it took me some time to try to figure that out. I just forgot about that. It's kind of a necessary step. So that's about all I have to demo with this part of the series. The next part of the series, I plan to kind of implement more of that Lambda that I showed you that has the S3 trigger going to it. And what I want that Lambda to do is basically unzip the file, upload all the individual NFT images and metadata files to another bucket so that we can use it at a later point in a more efficient way. And then also I'm gonna create some metadata into Dynamo. You know, I forgot to show you real quick about the Dynamo setup. Let me show you that real quick. So I, I do plan to be using DynamoDB to store some metadata about the jobs, right? So like when someone uploads a zip, I'm calling that like a job. And the job could either be like ready for processing, it could be processing or it could be done. And I want to keep track of the life cycle of that job to know when someone has paid for it or they haven't paid for it or like if it's been processed or not. So I did bring in another resource here for DynamoDB, which gives us the ability to create just random records and store them somewhere, right? DynamoDB is super cheap and kind of super easy to hit the ground running with just a quick little key value store. So I'm using that to basically store some of the metadata. Cool, so if you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up because it helps my channel grow and also helps my videos get promoted with the YouTube algorithm. Also leave a comment below if you enjoy the new style of how I'm doing like the markers to kind of show smaller sections of the system level diagram to kind of explain what I'm about to do. And like always, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button and bell icon to get more notifications in the future. If you're interested in seeing videos like this to kind of help you learn more about Amazon, learn about web development, and learn how to become a better web developer. All right, thank you so much for watching and happy coding.